Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket Preschool and can you guess whoo, what tonight's theme is? Well, if you haven't guessed, it is a New Year's theme. So we're gonna tell I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys all about activities you can do for um for a New Year's theme. So you can see I have a new fun sensory bin. See, I was trying to tip it so I could show you guys all the stuff inside. So for New Year's, I'm like a lot of the manipulatives that um, I grabbed were these like disco ball like type ornaments. Like I found these in like the Target dollar spot and they had like small, medium and large ones and they came in like silver and gold packs. Um, these little party hats, they're like the mini ones that you put on, but um, I thought these would be great like scoops in the sensory table. So again, just silver and gold of those. Um, I found some of these foam stars, which are really fun. Um, again, just came in like gold and black. And then I love these little tubes with um, caps. Originally I bought these for name sensory bottles, but um, I love them because students, these are stuck, um, but students can practice taking the lids on and off because that's really important, you know, because students have to open and close things. So again, it's like kind of like a self-help skill, which is great also for bilateral bilateral coordination because both sides of the body are working together. One side has to hold the bottle and the other side has to turn. Um, but yeah, so like look how much fun that is. They can scoop and fill it up and then put the lid on. And you don't have to have these tubes. You can have any kind of like little tube um, in here, and you can tell they're just black beans. Um, if you don't want to do food, um, you could do, you know, the, that like mesh tubing, you could grab some black mesh tubing or, um, those squishy things that for the sensory table, you can put those in here. They're black. Um, I also have these really big black utensils. Now, most of the time I put in tiny tools because I always say tiny tools for tiny hands. Um, but when students are using giant tools, as you can see me, I'm scooping, I'm literally having to use my upper arm and their bodies are little. So when you put in big tools, they're using their bigger muscles. So this is great for turning the wrist and using those big upper arms and shoulder muscles. So it's always good to have sometimes have big tools and sometimes have little tools in the center table. I also like cut up some necklaces and threw that in there. And then I also do have like gold and silver cups. I bought a set of gold and silver cups one year at Party City and they're great for blocks and the sensory table. So much fun. Yeah. But normally I don't put lots of big things in the sensory table, but for this theme, I thought it would be fun. Now, if, if you notice your students are pushing everything over to one side, you have too much stuff in there. Um, and clean it out a little bit. Now I would do this to my giant sensory table. So all of this stuff would be in the big one. Um, so it wouldn't be this, this cluttery full. So we could scoop and mix and explore and have tons of fun. So this is the really fun sensory bin. I'm gonna put this down. Okay. So keeping going with the sensory theme, here is a really fun Play-Doh tray. So I have these sparkly pom-poms. I think I got these at Walmart. More cut up beads. I made these little fireworks with sparkly pom-poms. Those would be really fun to like press in the Play-Doh. I have some more of the um, disco balls or like, they're like kind of like a New Year's ball drop. And then for my Play-Doh, I have this black Play-Doh and I just put a ton of different colors of glitter in it. If glitter isn't for you, that's okay. Just put some beads in it, or you can just do like um, a whole a whole bunch of colors and you can mix them together. Because if, if it's, you know, halfway through the year now, if you have some old Play-Doh, they can mix it all up and then it'll kind of look New Year's-y party-ish. So really fun um, Play-Doh tray. And then I have a little roller, um, some little tools. And then also, don't forget to add scissors to your Play-Doh trays to practice those um, scissor skills. And if you don't have Play-Doh scissors, it's totally fine. Put some regular scissors in there and it's no big deal. Um, so this is a really fun Play-Doh tray. So this is the freebie on the blog and you can do a whole bunch of things with it. We did add um, 2024, 25, and 26 
to the file. So if you have it, go down, um, grab it again. Um, I put the link to the blog post at the top. There's also a link to the New Year's um, Math and Literacy Centers um, at the top of the post. So basically it's kind of like a like cutting collage page. Again, a whole bunch of gears. So print all of them off and put them in your file. See them for next year. So they can do whatever, kind of whatever you want with it. You can give them a piece of the paper and they can cut or tear to kind of glue it on. They could use dot markers. You could just have regular markers out, kind of like what, whatever you want. This would be a really great arrival table time activity, like when they walk back in the door um, in the new year because they probably had a little bit of a break. So it's gonna take them a hot minute to get back in all of their routine. So this is great. Again, the link's at the top. It's the um, go to the blog. It's the New Year's blog post. That's where you can find it. And next week, it will go out in the newsletter. So in case you forget, it will come to you. And if you want to sign up for the newsletter, it's at the top of this post. So for a New Year's theme for art, um, again, it's going to be back to school. And most of us had a little bit of a break. So I sometimes, that first week back to school, I like to keep it kind of super simple, nothing crazy. So I just have um, some metallic paints. If you don't have metallic, it's fine. I have a little cup of little like firework looking, um, like table <laughs> table confet confetti. Um, and then I have, I bought these little um, jars for glitter. Um, they're just like little salt shakers. Um, so I have these out too. And then instead of a normal paintbrush, I put Q-tips in. Now, they can, if they want, they can make fireworks. They can totally do that. Or if they just want to explore the metallic paints on the black paper, that's fine too. If they just kind of want to make a scribbly mess, they can use two Q-tips at once. They can use one. I don't care. Whatever makes their heart happy and they can stick these in there in the middle and they can use a little bit of the glitter if they want. Again, just super open-ended um, because we're gonna be back to school. They just had a break, we had a break. And if you are teaching during all of the holiday breaks, everyone's sleep routines are off. So everyone needs kind of a relax kind of art activity. So metallic paints, some confetti or like sparkly stuff and then some glitter and it's just kind of open-ended exploring metallic paints and art and if they want to do fireworks they can you could also put a picture of like a photograph of real fireworks so they know what that looks like um, for some inspiration and they can go to town and I know a lot of people do the like firework stamping um, that's always a good one too I didn't want to share that one because I know everybody does that one all the time <laughs> Try to give you guys some different things. So going, keeping going with the fireworks, why not just do some firework fine motor? So I had these like metallic -y beads. Um, I usually grab my beads at like Walmart. All they're gonna do is string them on. That is it. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy, and they're just gonna match the color. So green on the green, purple, on purple, blue, on the blue. Now, you could also like take your pipe cleaners and make them all different colors and then students could make patterns on them. That is another option. Or you could just do this super simple, fine motor lacing activity. Now, if you don't wanna do fireworks, you can also do sparklers. Um, I just kind of, whoops, this one's coming apart, hold on. So I took and I <laughs> didn't put them together very well. Just um, cut up some little pieces and then um, you just kind of like wrap it around. It also looks like a wand. So remember this for fairy tales. Um, and then they can also put them on kind of like your little sparkler. So they're just putting them on the ends of the, the little sparkler or again, wands for fairy tales. <laughs> so really, really fun. Got little sparklers and fireworks, little lacing activity. So I know when I do a cutting collage or like a cutting tub, I usually use all this really beautiful ribbon, which kind of looks birthday-ish. But if you go to the Dollar Tree, they have these like curly Q ribbons. Okay, 
okay? Like ready to go. So I thought, why not? I thought we could make one together, which I kind of already started. So I just have a bin, and then all I'm literally gonna do is cut it off of the bows. And I just thought it's fun because it's kind of like already curled. Like, and I may say, like there's two, two bows on each one. I may save this for something else. Um, but it's so simple. Now you could also do this for like a birthday theme, but I thought the silver and gold was really fun. And again, all I'm doing is like cutting it off. I don't have to curl it or anything because the dollar store did it for me. Now this is like that little curly cue ribbon, like different sizes and different textures. And basically all this is going to be, and look how it just divides up. Ooh, so pretty. Um, and I got some silver too. Um, all this is gonna be is just a cutting bin because students love to cut things up. Whoops, very tiny. Whoops. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And I only, again, I only use half of the bows on these. Um, so you could probably just buy one gold, one silver, and then I didn't know how, long, how much it would take to fill, but look how fun this is. And all they're gonna do is just cut. They can just snip and snip hopefully obviously not cutting their fingers off, but they have to kind of like manipulate it a little bit more because it's curled. So they could probably stick their scissors in like the little curly cues and cut. Um, but it's just a really fun cutting collage. Again, this is a really great um, start that pops around, which is really fun. Um, cutting bins are great. Um, and I know my kinder teachers always say that your students need to work on cutting skills do this cutting bin for, and obviously preschool and pre-K are already doing it, but um, I know kinder teachers, like it's hard for you guys to sneak in all the fine motor because you have a little bit more academics, like, you know, teaching them how to read, a little bit more, more to do. Um, so the sneaking in the play-based stuff is trickier, especially with some admin. Um, but do this as a, um, as your like starting activity, arrival activity, just have literally a cutting bin out. This is great for early finishers. Um, inside recess in the um, colder months. Um, but yeah, just make a little New Year's cutting bin. So another art, I'm gonna put that over there. Art activity you can do is just, oops, there's the more of the ribbon. So I keep like a little basket of like streamer paper. Again, this is from the Dollar Tree. All they're gonna do is cut it and make a collage with it. So maybe they're gonna get out the green and cut it off and then they just glue it on super super simple but it's again a great cutting collage um it's open-ended they can make them long they can make a whole bunch of little ones they can tear it they can smush them up they can glue on little like balls whatever they want to do but a really fun just easy open-ended art activity again you can get like the gold and the metallics but i just had these colors again you can use the silver and gold for New Year's or you can use like the basic party colors, whatever works. You could use black and if you had silver, I think I saw silver or gold at the party store, so that would work too. But if this is all you got, this works too. So super easy, another open-ended art activity. Um, for you that works on those scissor, scissor skills. Okay, let me move some of this over. Okay, so again, we have, I just, um, if you're just watching this, um, we made the new New Year's Math and Literacy Centers. It was just released like two days ago. Um, so if you're watching this on replay, it's it's in my um, woo, it's in my um, store on my site, and it's on my Teachers Pay Teacher site. Um, so go grab it. It was also added to the Holiday Math and Literacy Centers set or bundle. So if you own that, it's kind of like a fun, a fun little freebie for you. Cause, um, yeah. Everybody requested a New Year's bundle and I had just hadn't done one yet. So that is where it is. So we have these word cards like we do for every theme. And again, I always have an uppercase set and I have a lowercase set, but to keep going with my, you can pretend they're fireworks or a sparkler, but basically what they're gonna do is they're gonna pick a word card. I just have these white beads. You can use whatever letter beads you have. Um, these I think are from like Walmart, maybe grab some. And again, you can make all different color little fireworks, but they can take the beads and build the word on it. Well, if you don't, and also if you don't want to do 
the New Year's Eve words. They can also, you can make little fireworks or sparklers and they can build their names um, and they can practice their names. You can also do these little like sight word um, fireworks or sparklers. Again, any beads you have and make some little fireworks. And now you have a really fun vocabulary or word building um, activity. So that's one thing you can do with the word cards. Another thing you could do is just put out some New Year's paper. I have these like, they're like metallic crayons um, and they can write the words and put out the word cards and they can just write the words on the New Year's paper. And I like putting out um, star stickers for a New Year's Eve theme. These are just like, again, glitter or metallic, any kind of like fun crayon works or just regular crayons. You could also do chalk um, and some star stickers. And then they have a fun little writing center. Again, they can just copy the word on onto the paper. Sometimes simple <laughs> during that first week back um, after a break is best. Do activities that are tried and true that students know how to do because um, everybody's going to be getting back into the routine of waking up and going to bed and kids are just crabby after a break because the routine's off. I know I'm sometimes crabby too because I'm tired. So a fun writing tray. So this is some confetti. Now if you're like that's nuts I'm not doing that in my classroom because it does stick um, to you a little bit. Take some salt, dye it black, and then put in um, some like rainbow sprinkles in it and you can have colored sand, which it's salt, but just take some white salt, put in a little bit of black liquid watercolor, shake, 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 and then you have sand and then you can put in some sprinkles if you don't wanna do this confetti or maybe you don't wanna do this much confetti, put in the, the make your black um, salt and then put a little bit of this in there. But I just found a black tray and then so students are gonna shake, shake, shake and then they can make all their letters. So W, I'm gonna shake, 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 and then make the W. I have a little bit of too, mu too much in here because then you can't really see the letters, but so yeah. So less is more in a sand tray, but yeah. So just grab a letter and they can make it in the confetti. Now, you don't always have to make letters. You could do shapes. So you could say, everybody make a circle and they can make a circle and then shake. Okay, make a square. Shake, shake, shake. You could also just draw the shapes on little pieces of paper and have them up here for them. You could also do numbers. They can also make their name, whatever you want. Just a really fun um, New Year's Eve, New Year's um, party, party tray, <laughs> party writing tray. All right. So you saw these letters I have out. Um, this is an activity I have. This is in the Math and Literacy Center set. Now you can play this two ways. You can do this with letters or you can do it with sight words. So this one, what they're gonna do is, let's see if I can switch this. There we go. So I have a little spinner and what they're gonna do is they're gonna spin it and that's gonna tell them what writing utensil they're gonna use and then they're gonna write the letter. And I made this little fun tray. I just, this is that like um, tubing from like the Dollar Tree. I think it's for like making like wreaths, like for crafts. I just threw a couple um, New Year's Eve balls in there and then they spin the spinner, pencil, they grab their pencil and then they would grab a letter card. Um, again, I have an uppercase letter set, a lowercase letter set, so you can do whatever you want. They can, you can mix up all the letters and do uppercase and lowercase. They can pick one out and then they can write it. Now, if you want, you could also do this as a sight word game. So, I have little sight word cards that come with it. And the sight word um, mat, so they would spin it, they would grab the marker, and then they would have to find the letters, which I did for it before we started, and then at, A-T, and then they would write it with the purple marker. So, and again, just a really fun, super simple way to do your writing tray. You could also have this out with the, um, the glitter writing tray and you could do it that way too. Totally up to you. Whatever you wanna do. All right. Move that down there. So this is another activity in, um, in the center pack. So we have these little party hats 
and I have some letters on a word trait. These are just those um, letter beads that we love so much. And then you can you can pick. You can either have the letters out, and you can see I have sounds out as well. And you can always do. Let's say you have three year olds. Maybe you're gonna do just the letters, and they're gonna match just letters only put out like 10 letters. You don't always have to put out the entire alphabet because that's overwhelming for students, especially if they're little. Maybe put out eight letters and then they can match the letter to the top. Or they can match the letter bead to the top or the sound. Like here is D. That one just has to be the top. I have all of them over here. <laughs> but. So again, super simple, they can match the sounds. And again, if you teach kinder, you can put out more of the letters because your students can handle um, more, more pieces and more um, their attention spans longer and they're just at a higher um, skill level. So we have matching letters or letters and sounds for our little learners with a New Year's theme. So we also wanna work on syllables for, to um, develop that um, phonological awareness. So we have these really fun ones. I, um, these are just some clip cards. So what they're going to do is pick a clip card and they're going to count how many syllables and then they're going to clip this on, which is great for your pincer muscles. So alligator, alligator four. And I did put a dice on there so they can alligator. They can use this to also count the syllables that they don't want to clip. And there's a bunch of those. This is, a, again, a really fun, super simple activity for to develop all those phonological um, awareness in your little learners. Okay. Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a little stacked over here. Okay. So this is another really fun thing you can do um, for your New Year's theme. If you want to add a little bit of, to um, increase engagement, I think it's upside down. I keep spinning it. <laughs> for you guys. I just took a pipe cleaner and I twisted it around a pencil. And so we know they have these little, little like confetti or streamer pieces. And all they're gonna do is these are puzzles. So they are going to match the puzzles and they're all over in here. Oh, here we go. Duck, truck. And again, you can put all of them out. You can put out six of them. You know your students, you know um, how tricky or how complicated you can make it. The more you put out, the harder it's going to be. Um, but again, just a really fun um, rhyming activity to develop that um, phonological awareness. And I just added a little bit on the trade just to make it a little bit more um, engaging and fun. Okay, so I you know you're like, Jackie, I want a butcher paper activity. And don't worry, I got you. So here's what we can do. So I grab, I have this black paper. Butch paper always, it doesn't have to be like gigantic. It can be really big and long. I would probably do this on the whole length of the table, but since you guys are right here, um, you can't see it anyways. <laughs> so what you can do is I love using chalk on black paper and it's really fun for like a space theme, but New Year's, everything is dark, right? So what you can do is you can have them you can have them do so many different things. You can have them do fireworks and then they can write their name. You can have like, or sorry, you can have them draw fireworks or write their name. Um, one thing, I have another one back there, but what you can do is with this one is, so gosh, roll the dice, six, and then they have to make a firework with six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then roll the dice again, one. I, and they can add on to it, one. They can roll it again, four. They can add on to it, one, two, three, four. Maybe that one's full and then they can start another one. Super, super simple, super fun. You can also, we're gonna pretend like this, that isn't there. <laughs> Just pretend like that's, that has gone. You can also draw a bunch of um, party hats. Oh, I thought I, I thought I had a letter dice out, but you can grab your letter dice and they can roll the letter dice A and then they could write the letters and they could roll the letter dice 
F and then they could write it. They could also pick um, a card and then they could practice that way too. So those are two really fun butcher paper activities. Again, you would have the, um, the party hat on here, a whole bunch of them, and then they would just roll the letter dice and write it. Now, if you don't have letter dice, take any like little wooden cube and just write letters on it, or you can put stickers on a dot dice, and then you can have a, um, a letter dice. So for this one back here, this one's really fun, although I think I forgot my pom-pom. I did. <laughs> okay. You know what? These will work. Hold on. I have something that I could use on another activity. Okay. So, for this one, I usually use pom-poms for this, but you can also use these magnetic chips. So, what you're going to do is they're going to roll the dice. Two. And they're going to grab one, two. And then they're going to have to sort it by color. Roll the dice. One one and they can put it on the firework. Roll the dice. One. <laughs> Pick one and put it on that color cap purple over here. So again, we're just rolling. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And again, cleanup is super simple because the magnet wands pick everything up. Now, if you are a kinder teacher and you want to work on addition, use two dice. They can roll both dice. Three plus two is five, and then they would put five on. Count out five and put five on the um, on the fireworks. So that would be roll, add, and sort. So you pick how you wanna do it. You can also use dice that only go one, two, or three, and that would work too. So here is a really fun math activity you can do. Um, so I have a little paper sorter. And I just wrote small, medium, large on these post-it notes in a little clear tray. And then I have pom-poms and disco balls. And all they're gonna do is sort small, medium, and large. Now, the palm of the pom-poms are small, medium, and large. They're a little bit different sized than um, the pom-poms, but it works. Use whatever you have. If you only have sparkly pom-poms, then just do that. I wouldn't, I have these in other games, so I would probably not be able to put all of them out, but I could put some of them in here for this game. So again, super, super simple. It doesn't always have to be crazy fancy, um, but it, cause this is what you guys, it's literally a post-it note. And just write, since our little friends can't read yet, write small, small, medium, medium size, and large, large. And all you have to do is probably have one in it. You could even tape one in it if you know your students are going to, other students are gonna play it. You can tape one at the bottom so it kind of goes, or you can also tape one to the top of the post-it note, and then they kind of have a visual on how you want them to sort. You could also sort, if you're doing these pom-poms, the, I call them like firework pom-poms, um, you can also sort them by color as well. So you saw I had party beads out. So, and I love cutting them up. They're really fun to put in Play-Doh too. Um, but, but these, I have them and they're all different sizes. So what we're going to do is measure with them. Now I cheated and I did, I put some of these cubes together before we started. <laughs> so that way you're not sitting here watching me do um, the activities. But this one is a little bit bigger. So they would say, oh, I need one more. And then maybe this one is really, really long. So they would have to put it together and they're doing non-standard measurement. Put those out there. To measure all the different beads and all the different lengths and then they can count. They can also compare which one is the longest, which one is the shortest. How do you know? Are they visually comparing? Are they counting um, out to see which one is longest by the number? So again, super, super simple, but really fun. Just cut your beads up because you probably already have cut beads up from your Play-Doh tray. So just cut the rest up different lengths and now you have a non-standard measurement um, game ready to go. So the rest of these are from my New Year's Math and Literacy Centers pack. So this one is a pattern activity. So you're gonna need connecting cubes. 
No, I again, I already did it before we started. But they're gonna pick a pattern and they have to make it on the um, on the ball drop. So they would have to connect them to make the pattern. And there's simple patterns, there's easy patterns. Now you can also let them make their own patterns on there so they can extend the pattern or they can make their own, totally up to you, whatever you wanna do, but a really fun um, pattern activity for New Year's. And you know I love the fireworks for New Year's. So I also have this really fun game where students can spin the spinner. Oops, that's an extra one. I had it kind of on here so you could see. And this again is with the magnet, the magnet wand chips. Oh, here it is. Here. So they spin the spinner and green. So they would add one more green on. And again, it's really fun to clean up because it has the magnet wand. But the whole time they're playing with this, you know how your students are. Oh my gosh, this one's winning. This one has the most. Oh, I haven't gotten any or I've gotten zero of whatever color they haven't had any yet or this one has the most and they'll be counting them. So they will be great um, math conversations as they play this game. Now, if you don't wanna use the magnets, you can always do it as a, with um, dot markers. So they would spin the spinner and then they would use dot, <laughs> use dot markers and dot their graph. Now this is also great to put in their portfolio to show um, for math and how they're exploring, they're taking data and collecting it and displaying it. So that's really fun. Um, but again, there's a um, black and white option. You can also, they can make X's on there too. You could also, if you don't have these bingo dice or like the bingo chips, you could also use connecting cubes. You could use buttons, you could use pom-poms, whatever you have, use that. So here are some little, say little, here are some firecrackers and it's a, another really fun lacing activity, but this time they are going to identify the number and put that money on. So this one has four and they put on four beads. They can match, not match, I don't care. Um, and I just tape it on the back, super simple. And then I just grab these beads. I think these neon ones are from Walmart. Walmart lately has had some really good cheap um, beads in their um, little section. And then, again, you can put all of them out. If you have three-year-olds or four-year-olds, you can put out just numbers to like 10 or numbers to 12. You don't have to put them all the way out to 20. Um, or maybe you're in kinder and you're working on numbers 10 to 20, so then only put out numbers 10 to 20. Super easy to dif differentiate this activity just by putting on um, the different um, numbers to match your student's level. And again, using beads is great for hand-eye coordination. Um, so, really fun um, math game. And we love pattern blocks, right? So I made these New Year's pattern block mats, but we're not just making anything. We're making the number and then they can, if they can't identify it, they can count it in the 10 frame and then they can trace it with a dry erase marker. And then they can make the number with the pattern blocks. Great for spatial reasoning. And students love pattern blocks. I know I do too. So, and if you don't wanna laminate all of them, you can always put these in page protectors. That, um, that works just as well. And the last activity I have to show you guys tonight is a New Year's Eve countdown. So I just took, um, that comes with these little stars, I just put them on the little clips so that way students know which one they are. They start at the top and they are going to count down. Oh, these little transparent spinners too I got on Amazon. You can always have them use a paper clip um, and spin it that way too. So this one, they spin it four. So they would count down four. One, two, three, four. And then spin it again. Count down three. One, two, three. 
and they would count down all the way till they get to one. And then, if you want to make it harder, this is, um, they could do plus one or minus one. So again, they start up at 15. Plus one, I can't go any higher. The next person's turn, <laughs> plus one, we'll say minus one on that. And then they go down. But basically, they're gonna go up and down and up and down the whole time, and it'll be really, really fun um, to see who counts down. But it's a great way to practice one more and one less. But again, if you have littles, use the dot dice, or the dot um, dice um, spinner. If you have a kinder or um, older pre-K students, you can use the plus one, minus one. Really fun. And it does come with a, um, a worksheet. So, I hope you guys enjoyed all of the New Year's Math and Literacy Centers um, and Fine Motor and Sensory and Art. I hope you guys loved all of them. There is a blog post up. Um, I don't have all of these photographed yet, um, but most of them are. So you can go over there and check it out and for sure grab um, that freebie. And again, make sure you're signed up for my newsletter because that will go out if you want it now. You can go grab it. And there is also a book list for a New Year's um, theme. There are some New Year's books and then there's also some Lunar New Year books because um, it's a great time to celebrate Lunar New Year in your classroom. Um, when you come back from break as well, and that the all of my lunar new year printables, the math, STEM, all of that, math, literacy, STEM, everything, all of the lunar new year, lunar new year printables, those are in my holidays around the world unit. So I hope you guys loved it. If you try any, any of these activities in your classroom, make sure you tag me. I'd love to see what you guys are doing. Post it in the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group because you guys are full of inspiration and you guys inspire each other so much. And we also love to say that you're doing an awesome job. So because we all know that you don't always get to hear awesome job, that's great, especially if you're a teacher that is always going above and beyond. Um, sometimes there's people who are saying you're doing too much and if that's what makes you happy, do it. Um, we will cheer you on in the Pocket Preschool Facebook group if you don't have that in your school. Um, so yeah, so you guys have a great um, evening or day whenever you're watching this, if you're watching the replay. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day or night. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.